you've ever found yourself singing along cheerfully to a Grease classic, you might be surprised what you're actually singing about. Today, we're talking about the secrets and scandals that even some of the most diehard fans may not know about the 1978 classic. Many of the songs in the movie have lyrics that point to obvious and not so obvious sexual innuendos and trysts behind the scenes. After all, the movie was filmed over two sizzling hot months at Venice High School in Los Angeles, the very location that would later inspire Britney Spears' Baby One More Time. Remember, although the movie was set in the 50s, it was made post-60s sexual revolution. Give him a pie and the puss! The title of the motion picture paid tribute to the 1950s culture of greasy food, greasy hair, and what else? And if you think we're making something out of nothing, it was no secret in Mexico, where it did particularly well. Grease was literally translated as Vaselina. Okay, okay, you're still not convinced. Let's hear it straight from the director. We wanted to put as much sexual references in as we could because that's what makes it fun. I'm your host, Nostalgic Nick from Do You Remember? And today we're taking a look at the hidden secrets and scandals of the 1978 movie Grease as told through the soundtrack. If you enjoy this video, please hit the like button in the bottom right hand corner and also subscribe to our channel by clicking the subscribe button. That way you won't miss a single video we come out with. Now, let's get into the fun stuff. Greased Lightning. Nothing like starting out with arguably the most popular song in the film, Greased Lightning. Let us remind you that Grease, the staged version, was supposed to be a far more mature audience. The T-Birds were wielding switchblade knives, which were later adapted into pocket combs for the movie. The original staged version of the song was intended to be about turning an old-fashioned Buick into a bedroom. We definitely got that implication. The songs are chock full of suggestive lyrics, and chances are if you can catch the film playing on TV or at a local high school production, you'll notice some lyrics are toned down a bit for the sake of appropriateness. Altering lyrics like, chicks will cream, to the chicks will scream, is one example. Another is, she's a real pussy wagon, changed to, she's a real dragon wagon. You know that I ain't bragging, she's a real dragon wagon, she's lightning. Yeah, it's a little more PC. In one shot in the movie, you may or may not have noticed John Travolta rubbing saran wrap over his crotch as a sly sexual reference. See, back in the 1950s, many misinformed teens would use saran wrap as a contraceptive when they were unable to buy condoms. Hey, Can you imagine Henry Winkler as Danny Zuko? The Fonz actually turned down the role because he was already playing a very similar role on Happy Days. What's even more interesting is that the Beach Boys were originally supposed to sing the song in the garage. Can you imagine how different the the song would have sounded not bad, but way different. Sha na na, born to hand jive. They call me Cha Cha, cause I'm the best dancer at St. Bernadette's with the worst reputation. There's a dance off going on over at Rydell High, and you've guessed it, between the hip thrusts and dress twirls, it's another great place to stick in some suggestive antics. Patricia Birch, the choreographer of the scene, said, We wanted it to be as raunchy and funny as possible. To start, Susan Buckner's character gets her dress pulled over her head by Kaniki. Seems innocent, although this stunt was practiced many times. No wonder, real life Jeff Conway later brought back Susan to his trailer. This was admitted by Susan herself. We had a trailer moment. <laughs> we also can't forget Cha-Cha's suggestive moves that nearly stole Danny away from Goody Two Shoes Sandy. Yeah, let's bring it up now. Bring it up. Time to slip in that there was a little bit of drinking going on as well. And Vince Fontaine, host of the dance-off, can't seem to keep his hands to himself. In this scene, a much older Fontaine, played by 77 Sunset Strip actor Ed Burns, takes his shot at nearly every high schooler in the room. He seems to have the most chemistry with an enthralled teenager Marty. Here's a nice cherry innuendo. Maraschino? You know, like in cherry? All was going well until we later find out she caught him trying to slip aspirin in her drink. I've been Fontaine trying to put aspirin on my coke at the dance. Sandy, the drive-in. Do you remember when Danny took Sandy to a drive-in movie following the dance drama? She was already pretty annoyed that he and Cha-Cha danced together, and then he goes in to finally make a move, it appears in front of everyone. Sandy, what's the matter with you? I, I, I thought I meant 
means something to you. This is where Travolta gets his big solo number. Of course, he didn't go in for the move before giving Sandy his ring to try and patch things up from the night before at the dance, thinking he'll make it right. Inevitably, stranded at the drive-in, branded a fool, what will they say Monday at school? Danny Zuko sings after Sandy abandons him in the drive-in parking lot. Remember, Travolta actually had a pretty big crush on Newton John. Originally, she wasn't even sure she wanted to play the role of Sandy. She requested to see the screen test footage before committing to anything. While we're at the drive-in, this seems like a good time to talk about another high, sexually tensioned romance. It's clear that Rizzo has a lot of feelings for Kaneki. Oh, and did you know that the hickey from Kaneki was actually a real hickey? Heck, there's nothing like being authentic, right? As we mentioned earlier, Kaneki apparently got around quite a bit on set. This scene ends with Travolta singing Sandy as a seemingly innocent hot dog jumps into a bun. Yeah, beauty school dropout. School dropout. Didi Cohn tells us about her time filming the beauty school dropout scene with Frankie Avalon, who was 40 years old at the time the movie premiered. Frankie Avalon, woo, coming down those steps. I mean, I, I'm drooling now, man. I mean, it was no acting. She reveals that the T-Birds had some issues with filming the angel scene towards the end of the song. And quote, the boys said they weren't afraid to go up high, but they didn't know the harnesses would be so tight around the privates. They were in such pain, Dee Dee says. Jeff Conaway, who played Kaniki in the movie, actually injured his back during the sequence, leading to an addiction to painkillers that would follow him for the rest of his life. There was a lot of porking going on on set. Wait, 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 close. Dee Dee Cohn said that they had to keep the windows closed because next door was a pork plant. She said, quote, it was so smelly, noisy, and so very, very hot, but everybody was just having fun, dancing and trying new things. Well, you had to, or you'd faint from the heat. This song is also guilty of having a suggestive lyric as well. Do you remember which line it was? Oh yeah, that hooker line. Unless she was a hooker. Another fun fact from Dee Dee, she admits that the wrap up party when the movie was finished was a bit of a blur. She said, quote, I don't even remember the wrap party because somebody made some brownies. There was something in it. I won't mention names. I just remember laughing a lot. It sounds like the whole cast had a lot of fun that day. Look at me, I'm Sandra D. This is a turning point for the audience as we got to witness Rizzo in all her shameless glory. Look at me, I'm Sandra D. Making fun of Sandy being a goody two shoes. There's a lot of lyrics in this that point to making fun of Sandy being a virgin, afraid of sex, and not being able to smoke a cigarette without coughing. <coughs> Excuse me. We also can't forget that infamous ending line. Hey! Fungo! I'm Sandy! Which actually means saying F you to someone. This line is typically removed from television versions of the movie. You making fun of me, Riz? Some people are so touchy. Rizzo is one of the most interesting characters in that we get to see not only her exterior edginess, but also her interior softness. You're the one that I want? Sandy? This scene is a groundbreaking moment in the film where Goody Two Shoes Sandy Olsen transforms into what is now known as Bad Sandy. Tell me about it, stud. Could this be a nod at Sandy's transition into womanhood? Olivia Newton John has said herself that when she finally put on the black leather costume for the end of the movie, she was treated differently by her male co stars, giving her much more attention. Newton John also reveals that she actually had to be sewn into the outfit because it was so tight fitting. The actress herself was super nervous about putting on that costume, unsure if she was doing the right thing. Director Randall Kleiser admits that when he first saw Newton John in her black leather outfit, he didn't even know it was her at first, saying, quote, When we were shooting at the drive-in, that's when they first put together her makeup and her outfit and showed me how she was going to look for the ending. There was all this noise and this girl coming toward me with this wild hair, and I said, who's that? Originally, Danny Zuko was supposed to commit suicide in a more Romeo Juliet-esque ending, but we're happy that they killed that idea. <laughs> well, that's cool, baby. So, did you know all of these scandalous and surprising facts about Greece? It's hard to believe that so many of these facts have been kept under the radar for so long. Tell us in the comments what you learned from this video, and let us know if we forgot any enticing information.
Hey, before you leave, make sure to like this video and please subscribe to our channel as it would mean the world to us. That way you won't miss a single throwback video we premiere. As always, from all of us at Do You Remember, thanks for watching.